Please welcome Steve Kovalik. I hope I spoke it nearly as correct as you like to. It's close enough. Okay, thanks. Um, talking about his obsession. <laughs> so, Steve, please, the stage is yours. Thank you. I wasn't going to start this with a bad joke, but I may as well. So, you know, Obsession by Stephen Kay. A new fragrance. Um, I'm hoping this is better than the one I did in LCA. Uh, hopefully due to the fact that I have more than one talk. Um, I, I was traveling to LCA and I went to a uh, wedding reception in Yass. The organizer of the Minicon said, oh, would you like... When? Tomorrow. Oh, all right. <laughs> Um, what I hope to cover in this talk is, a, is a, give you a short trawl through the, uh, through the milestones that I've passed or stumbled over while developing Linda. Uh, I plan on taking you deep into the guts of Linda and showing you what makes it tick. Uh, and I'll go over what, what you might want to do to help me out. And then I'll show you what I think I might want to do for the future of Linda. Um, well. I'm aware that LinkedIn already exists. Where's Duran? Where, where are you hiding? <laughs> uh, I'm aware that it exists, but actually, at the time I started writing Lin uh, Linda, LinkedIn was uh, was obtained, and mine was I felt it was unmade. Um, my opinions of the code are still colored by my first impressions of reading reading the Perl. Um, you know, and it doing things like warning about libc6 that haven't actually for the last three years or so, and you know, pretty much everywhere. And, and being a, a twisted mash of shell and pearl just doesn't really give you a warm, warm and fuzzy feeling of, of you know, no false positives and stuff like that. Uh, the second reason I wanted, is uh, I wanted to learn Python, and I found that the best way to do that is to actually think of something and start writing it, you know, going through a tutorial or something. And the third reason is I have an utterly unhealthy interest in policy. I don't know why, but I get excited when there are new versions of policy released, and, and I, I, I watch Debian-policy at list.d.0 with, with unhealthy obsession. <laughs> um, so first, Linda actually started life as Lisa, and when it was shown at uh, uh, LCAO, uh, I've got a few ideas, some of which are still actually in Linda today. But, uh, the main thing that I walked away from that talk was AJ, and I don't know who's here, but uh, he uh, sort of said that Lisa's already used by the Katie package for uh, handling new and by hand packages, and could you please choose something else? Uh, so he suggested Lisa. Also, the, the fact that it starts with L I N, and I liked it, so it stuck. Uh, so the rest of uh, the conference was actually spent rewriting the packaging and uh, making her like the new name. Uh, I announced uh, Linda to Debian Dash Devel on the 16th of March 2002, and I made uh, DWN four days later, which is March. Uh, Linda 008, complete with a uh, stupid typo, was uploaded to the archive on the 4th of June and made it through new six hours later. Uh, the next big milestone was 0013, which added support for changes and UDEBs. Um, so the next milestone was 1.0 uh, after 0018. I thought I'd fixed enough bugs to actually warrant a major version jump. Um, the next thing of note was actually, is actually kind of fun, and I implemented it in uh, 013, which is multiple output formats. I, I'm pretty sure most of you have actually seen them, but I'll show them off anyway. Uh, if we just pick a, a random... Oh, bollocks. <laughs> well, well, that's VNC rec being dumb, but don't hit tab. It's just a random package I happen to have in the directory. However, the next mode is even more fun.
anything to say for yourself. I happen to know that these are pretty old jokes. <laughs> well, they're mine. Yes. Uh, Linda 016 actually included a POT file. Um, I didn't actually have any idea how to do localization or internationalization then, but I started generating one, so it's got to count for something. Um, Linda uh, 10, oh, 0112, James Troop, Matthias Close, and myself implemented a way of uh, seeing if a binary indirectly links against uh, two different versions of the same library. For example, you've got a binary that links against two libraries. Uh, let's call them library A and library B. Library B links against library C. And then the fun starts when library A and library C are the same library with two different sovers. Um, I actually have an example to show you. Uh, what's it called? That one. So someone's already screwed up the C++ transition and has uploaded their package too early. And they would have actually caught this if they'd run Linda across their package before uploading it. But uh, Since you've embarrassed me, why don't you show us who maintains that? All right. <laughs> I don't think they're here. No. Uh-oh. Debbie and JP. <laughs> Thanks again. Um, so the next milestone was, was point two after I'd actually rewritten enough to uh, consider it good enough and true to form, it took another four releases to actually stabilize again. Uh, in 2.2, I actually got rid of the dependency on Python apt by uh, no longer using app package for version comparison. It's kind of funny getting a segfault bug on, H on PA risk on a uh, architecture all package. Uh, it seems that the Python apt library does something really screwy and causes a segfault it causes a segfault of Python on PA risk. Do you know if that's still true? Uh, no. I worked around it by getting rid of the dependency. <laughs> Did you file a bug? <laughs> right. I'm going to pass the microphone over to Brandon. He'd give the rest of the talk. Um, I think I'll do that and check. Uh, in two in 026, I tried to do the whole localization thing all by myself, started passing uh, Lang and friends, and trying to print out other languages and warnings by looking up description.passedLang like uh, DebConf does in its templates. Um, and if a few versions later, I actually figured out that this was a really bad move. Passing Lang is bloody hard. And, and even then, what happens if you get it wrong? Um, and so I, I, I left that, that bit of the code alone, just sort of hoping that no one noticed. No one actually did, because I didn't actually get any translations, but <laughs> um, in uh, 0216, something quite amusing happened. I was a couple of days away from releasing it, and someone filed a bug saying that their package couldn't be unpacked by Linda. I'm checking, and, uh, and actually by that stage, I'd rewritten level two unpacking to fix another bug. and. Um, Oh, that's right. I looked at it and decided it was absolute crap. And uh, I'm running Linda on this .deb going, but it does work. What are you talking about? Um, 030 is the biggest milestone to date. Change log entry is 140 lines long, and I've pretty much hit every bit of code. Um, this is also where I start going through the guts of Linda. Uh, Linda copped a bootstrapping module, which runs early initialization. Um, but it isn't actually that early because the command line parser module runs first. Uh, this is why Bootstrap actually exists because if you need to actually do anything that references the Linda namespace in the command line parser, um, the Linda module actually imports Linda.cl parser. And then if you try and import Linda in that, you go around and around and around. So I actually just uh, had the epiphany to add a bootstrapping module and fix that. Um, collector appear, appeared afresh, which encapsulates running file and objump and LDD and other such things. Um, that was pulled out of Unpacker since I wanted um, 030 to be a little bit cleaner. Uh, I wrote 12 passing modules from scratch. 
uh, mainly because the control file parser in 0.2 could be used to scare small children, uh, and because most of the files in Debian packages that are required to be parsed can be actually done with a generalistic RFC 8.2.2 style parser. Uh, a test suite. I know that's a good idea, and I was, I've been meaning to do one for quite a while, and 0.3 was actually when I finally decided to figure out how to do it. Um, it runs about 195 tests, which probably encapsulate about 400 odd warnings. Um, the other scary thing is that, that is that just the checks of Linda is about a thousand lines of Python, whereas the test suite is about four and a half. Um, and actual localization of uh, Avera messages. Um, has anyone ever tried running Linda in a German locale? Does it work? No. Oh. Uh, it uh, outputs in the wrong transfer. I fixed that bug. Which, okay, ver then, which, version, of, <laughs> which version of Linter are you running? Uh, <laughs> 0.3.15. Bother. <laughs> <laughs> Can you come and see me after? Yeah. Um, I actually have seen it working, though. <laughs> I promise. I'm not picking on Brandon or anything. <laughs> but th does that look correct? Yeah, this looks, this looks correct. But uh, if I have here a uh, UTF-8 terminal and set lang to uh, e, uh, d, d, UTF-8, I get the wrong uh, encoding in the output. I really thought I fixed that. I even... Let's investigate <laughs> this later. Because I got a bug filed against it. I <laughs> looked at it and went... I thought I fixed that. Um, so German is actually the most complete translation I have, even though I've been told it doesn't work. Um, although admittedly there are a few issues with actually getting translators to work their magic over you know, 530 strings, most of which are paragraph sized. Um, related to this change, description files were named to data files because the descriptions actually no longer live there and are in a uh, peer, uh, in a POT file. Um, so she does what? Well, the first thing that happens is Python spawned off, funnily enough, because she's written in Python. And roughly six modules in the Linda namespace are imported. A few unimportant things are, are, are looked over, like is our installation sane? Like, can it find a few directories and are there files under them? Um, am I running as root? If it is, it will drop to nobody. And they should specify the minus capital S flag. Um, because someone said, if I run it as root, then it can't read the files it unpacks. Um, well, it's minus capital S for stupid. But, um, and then it checks if there's one or more valid files uh, was specified on the command line. Uh, we then instantiate a checker object, which does all the heavy lifting, like unpacking and running all the checks, uh, running all the checks that, were, that are in the registry. Um, after all the checks are run, the overrides are processed, and then we print out the errors and the warnings, the ones that weren't actually overridden. Uh, that's a basic description of what happens. Um, you know, lin lin Linda in 100 words or less. Uh, there are a few other things that need to be explained, like CL parser doing the extremely early, extremely early initialization, like checking your files that exist. And the fact that checks themselves need to inherit from libchecks.linda checker, uh, since that actually provides uh, a few uh, a few of the methods that you, you need to actually call to be a sane check. So I've got a little one here. Um, e even if you don't understand Python, I, I feel that this is probably self-explanatory enough that I can just step through it quickly and to show you what happens. Um, class means I want to be a class. I inherit from libchecks.linda checker. Def means I want to make a method or a subroutine in Python. I don't know why. Uh, the check binary one is special. Um, when, when, uh, when the last line is called, the checks.register, it actually runs uh, get, get a true on the, um, on the class and sees it if it implements check binary or source one or two and then runs it at that level. And then I just call the newer feature um, method which just runs AR and then if there's data.tar or data.tar.bz2 in there, I say, you, you know, 
you're running a new, you're using a newer feature that is actually allowed. Funnily enough, that's allowed in Ubuntu at the moment, so I don't know what they're doing with this check. Uh, so, how can you help out? I know I say this every time, but translations, nothing makes my day like receiving an email with a, with a PO file attached that teaches Linda a new language or corrects her skills in, in a language. Um, write patches. I've never received a non-trivial patch to Linda. Um, I don't know why this is, you're all afraid of my Python skills or what, but I'd like to really receive a patch via a bug report. Um, e even just testing her, another thing that makes my day is a, is a well thought out bug report that says, you know, I run Linda on my package and it does this. And, you know, I think it should do, should do this instead. It's in this check, it's about this line. I don't have any Python skills, so I can't fix it, but to have a look. Um, one of the things that actually annoys me the most is when I get a bug report filed against Linda saying, I ran Linda on this package, here is the error. And then I check, and the package in question is not even in the archive, and they haven't provided me a website where to get the package. Um, an idea for a new test, or what you'd consider a false positive for, for a test, even if you're wrong, I'll even look at, I'll still look at the code and see if I can actually see what it does and, and maybe just, you know, kick myself and rewrite it because it looks dumb. Um, Linda is mostly undocumented. I know this is hard to believe. Um, but, the, or, you know, all the documents actually written in, or it's in my head. Um, I've made attempts at correcting this by, by actually documenting Linda. I've written two small docs both text files that haven't been touched since about point one. Um, but I usually get bored halfway through or distracted and um, my idea for writing the docs just goes away. Um, I'd really like Linda for L Linda to have uh, auto-generated good documentation. Um, I don't know if there's the oxygen or something like that for Python, but um, maybe if someone knows anything about doing auto documentation, come and find me or, or, or send me a mail or something. Um, well now I'm going to make a complete and utter fool of myself and write a test for Linda in real time. So I've got my copy of Emacs. Uh, I'm going to write this as a local check which go under uh, dot Linda in your, your home directory. Um, so the first thing to realize is that you need to uh, yes, you need to import libchecks and checks. Um, define a class, and don't forget to inherit. You, yes. It's that hard to read. Um, does anyone know how I can do that to Emacs then? <laughs> Run Emacs in an X term. Are you mad? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Dim the light. Uh, where's the MC gone then? <laughs> uh, what I'll do is this instead. Where is it? It was something involving. It's the other menu. It's the other menu? The, the, the menu. Really? Actually, I'm sorry. There we go. I was doing that before that happened. Uh. <laughs> it went away again. Oh, it's back. Right. Is that better? No. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you need to, okay, uh, escape, uh, colon, we're going to do a colon on command set. Background equals dark. That didn't help a whole lot. 
Well, I can read it. What about the rest of you? <laughs> Uh huh. So now we're switching back to Emacs. <laughs> Will you people please make up your mind? And control right button doesn't do anything. Yeah. Is the font just too small? Is that what's wrong? <laughs> Fine. I can I can do that. I don't make typos. Uh, I could. I'm not crazy. Um, because, sorry? Uh, this, that's already large. Um, I can go one up. Right. I think that's in a menu. Options, uh, bond size. Yeah. Right. I just prefer this as opposed to typing in using, say, cat or echo. Um, so the the we, we implement the first method. Um, you pass self because it's going to actually be a method as opposed to just being a... Uh, a standard uh, subroutine. Um, I'm not going to implement separate uh, separate method calls for this. I'm just going to go and do it. So how about we just make fun of something that everyone's seen before? <laughs> and so we want this to actually print something out. And so you, you accomplish that by calling self.signalerror. And because I forgot to do this before when I was checking if this actually worked, and thanks to increasing the font size, I can't actually see the mini buffer. Let's just hope I can type blind. Hooray! Wait. <laughs> and we say it's an error because we want people to embar be embarrassed that they're checking a supplicant package. Um, no. Uh, and we'll just check if Linda has actually noticed. Right. <laughs> and that's what happens when you don't do it right. So I'll just accidentally borrow. Yeah, well, <laughs> don't believe everything you hear. Right. And it's not there. <laughs> of course it's not there. Now, if we, now, third time's the charm. There it is. And now, you'll notice that it actually just types out the string with an underscore s at the end. It means it's trying to look up the short description string in the POT file. Get text notices that there's no string called supplicant dash package underscore s and just returns the original string. Um, I've tried I, in the half an hour or so I had before coming here. I tried to figure out if I could make that better. It seems I can't. If anyone has any ideas of how to do that, please see me as well. Um, so looking towards Linda04, I don't actually have any hard and fast ideas. Um, I'm actually mulling over the idea of using Alexa to go through the RFC A22 file, uh, star files, since if you throw at something if you throw Linda something she doesn't understand in an RFC-822 file, it does actually just die with like a 20-line 20, 20 traceback. Um, I'm also considering profiling the hell out of her and uh, rewriting parts in C. 
But uh, number one, I don't know how to do that. And number two, I would like to know how to do that. So if anyone, if anyone knows if that's a good idea or a bad idea, right. And right on time, questions. Has anyone got any? Um, Dancer. Not 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes for questions. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll finish early. That's okay. Um, first, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I had a question. Um, when I release a package, I generally run, have a script that runs both Linda and Lintian, and then I look at all the different errors and warnings and compare them and try to figure out which are broken in which way and which is my fault. And I wonder if this is ever going to get more unified, so I can just run one program that actually yes. outputs, you know, all the things that they both check for right now. Well, jump on him and tell him to remove Lintian from the archive, and problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have actually been meaning to talk to Jerome about uh, perhaps, uh, I don't know, having some way of having them interoperate. Um, I don't know if that's actually going to become reality, but I can try. <laughs> um, the reason I started Linda is because I didn't like Lintian, so that's why there's two of them. Well, yeah, but they're, they both, they're, neither one is a subset of the other, so if you really care, you run both. That's right. <laughs> what did he say? But it, uh, if you really care, you'll run both, which I also think is really good advice. Um, where's the maintainer of Bookmark Bridge evidently did not, since Lintian doesn't actually do the, the double uh, slib check. You got a bug about that, did you notice? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, question, uh, does the check work if you don't have the libraries installed? No. Um, okay. That's actually... Um, I, uh, the, well, the question was, does the check work if you don't have the libraries installed? Um, I, I tried to debug this. It's actually quite hard to do it. You can't do it if you don't have the libraries on the file system. Yep. Um, since, since Bookmark Bridge links against um, uh, G++ G++4 and parts of KDE link against G++3, um, you need the KDE lib in, on the file system to actually check what it links against. Um, I found that if you don't actually have it installed, you, um, you don't get the error. But uh, I thought that this was OK, since the, if the maintainer is running it, he's going to have the library installed so he can actually run the damn thing. Um, anyone else? Hold on. Yep. Um, that does mean that if you run a Linda multiple times on a different system on a certain package, you can get different outputs because it really depends on what um, what environment you run it in. Also, is Linda uh, cross architecture? Can you run it on a PowerPC package if you own uh, i386? Uh, yes, uh, I think I still rec uh, suggest or recommend binutils multi-arch, which deals with this sort of thing. Um, it will deal. I have tried it. I haven't tried it recently, but uh, as far as I'm aware, it still actually works. Um, I, at, at, the, at the moment, I'm actually in the middle of uh, breaking FTP UK Debian.org by running Linda across the entire archive. Um, and at some point, I'm going to uh, run it across uh, not just i386 packages like I am at the moment, but i386, PowerPC, and perhaps something like ARM or, or Spark or something, and just see what happens. Um, yeah. Any other questions? I know Dancer had one. Um, hi, I'm Junichi Eka. Yep. And uh, I would like to ask about the internationalization aspect of Linda. Internationalization what, sorry? In internationalization of the strings in Linda. Because um, you have the strings, or the short strings and long strings, as a very cryptic string, as a some some string under bar s and that's, some string under bar yeah, l. Yeah, that, that that that's called the tag. Yes. Um, uh, why are you d using the tag for as a translation, get text, 
what do you, what do you call it? Uh, I can't remember, but uh, the get text, text? Message ID. Message ID, and not the actual short string, because uh, most translators are used to translating the short uh, message ID as the original English. Yes, um, I'm aware of that, and if Christian Perry is here, he's been jumping on me about it <laughs> si since, since I got here. <laughs> um, he, uh, he filed a bug saying that uh, the, uh, the internationalization of Linda is just appalling, and what are you doing? Um, uh, basically, get text is designed to take one string, look up another string. I don't want to have the English just in the checks because um, then if you've, if you've actually got two, two checks with the same text, uh, you then may actually get the wrong long description if they've got different long, description, long descriptions. So I look it up by tag. Um, so I'm actually doing what get text was actually designed to do, which is take one string, look up another one, and return it if it exists, um, as well as a, a little hack to the Python get text module so that it actually falls back to en rather than c. Um, but since uh, I think 0114 or so, um, I've actually started, no, not you. Uh, no. uh, bear with me. Oh, looks like I haven't built Linda. Uh, anyway, what happens during the build process is that the en.po is actually passed in and is actually spat out into the POT with the English as a comment and the tag as the message ID so that translators should hopefully just be able to change the message to and then submit it as a, as a PO file and, and everyone's happy. However, Christian Perry still isn't and yeah. he has a question. Yeah. Uh, not actually a question, but I want to resume our talks uh, you want to together resume our because talks now? I think uh, well, we are talking now <laughs> also, but we, we talked to, together a while ago. And the problem with this system, and you know it now, uh, the translators do not notice when you change the English messages. So this is why we still have to improve the things, and we have to find someone who is able to hack down something again, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a call, a call for volunteers. Do, do we actually have any get text hackers in the audience? Yeah, we need get text hackers to, to solve the, sort these out. Oh, all right, you all disavow all knowledge. All right. <laughs> we will find one. <laughs> <laughs> any more questions? Yes, Lars. <laughs> Would it be possible to rewrite the policy so that it can automatically be the checks can automatically be generated from that. Uh, sorry, can you speak a little slower? Would it be possible to rewrite policy, the actual document, uh, in a machine parsable format that could be uh, used to generate the checks itself? <laughs> I have one question. Are you mad? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I started this to write a checker, not rewrite policy. Um, I like the way you think. <laughs> Sorry? Um, um, I don't implement everything in policy as yet. Um, patches welcome. Um, this has actually come up before, um, where I actually said, you know, you're mad the first time. Um, why didn't ESR come? He likes writing shit like this. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't actually, since, since policy just aims to be so, you know, so well defined, it's actually, in my, in my opinion, quite difficult to do something like this and, and write you know, your package must do this. Um, I don't think you can just take policy on its own and just sort of convert it to some machine passable format, then put it through it, then, then actually pass it and just run it across a package and see what you get. Um, I don't think that's worthwhile because you've also got 
um, if you write Pyth if you write policy in machine passable format, then you're actually taking away the author's idea of what policy actually means. And I think that's where some of the strength lies, where, where someone like Brandon or, uh, can look at a paragraph in policy and just say, I think it means this. Uh, where someone else could look at it and say, no, I think you're wrong, it means this. Then you take it to the tech committee and sort it out. But, um, in two or three years. In two or three years, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, any other questions? But uh, if, if someone actually wants to do that, patches are welcome, I'm guessing, either to Debian Policy or Linda. No one else? Right. Thank you for your attention.